Hello YouTubes, I'm sorry this is not going to be a particularly happy video. You know, I don't usually like to dwell on the negatives, I usually like to talk about positive things and solutions to the problems that our oceans currently face, but sometimes we do just have to pause and take stock of the damage that we as a species are doing to this gorgeous natural world that we live on um, and if you've been following the news at all you will have heard about this crazy heat wave that has been ravaging southern Europe and northern America all of the insane wildfires they've had there people being evacuated I mean it's just been a bit of a disaster both June and July were the hottest June and July has ever recorded since we started recording temperatures. We've had uh, record breaking land and sea temperatures that have just been hotter than ever recorded before. So yeah, this year um, things have really, really started to heat up. And for those who say climate change isn't real, I say it's time finally to take your heads out from your asses. But on this channel, we focus on the ocean, obviously, and another story that has been making headlines has been this crazy marine heat wave that has been hitting the coast of Florida in the United States of America. This story started breaking around mid-July-ish and ocean temperatures were recorded well above 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius with the hottest temperature recorded at 101 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 38 degrees Celsius, which for reference is hot tub temperatures. So these oceans are basically just cooking at the moment. Um, it's just this really intense heat wave that's been there for a couple of weeks now. And this goes beyond just, you know, breaking these climate records, which is what seems to be what this year is all about. But it has devastating impacts for the marine life in the region. These are obviously temperatures that are way beyond what they usually are are or should be exposed to and the most devastating and obvious impacts have been on the coral reefs in the area. Now for those who know what coral bleaching is, I apologize, please skip ahead to the next chapter, but for those who don't know or who want a bit of a refresher, corals are essentially these crazy organisms where they're part rock, animal and plant all in one. So the animal part of a coral is called a polyp and they're kind of related to like jellyfish and these polyps provide a home to a type of algae called zooxanthellae. So the algae live within the polyps, they photosynthesize and provide food to the polyps so it's this nice symbiotic relationship. But I'm sure you guys know that when we get hot really hot our bodies go into stress mode we start taking all our clothes off we start sweating and the same thing kind of happens to these polyps when water temperatures get beyond what they can handle they become stressed they can't just pack up and move somewhere else so what do they do they expel these algae from themselves and the algae is what gives the coral its color so without its algae it has no color it goes white hence it's called coral bleaching now, a bleached coral doesn't necessarily mean a dead coral, it just means it's not gonna get food for a while. So if the ocean temperatures come back down, the polyps become less stressed, they invite their algae friends back in, they have a big party, everybody's happy and they carry on living. But if ocean temperatures stay really hot, essentially the, the coral polyps just starve to death and then the coral does die. Now all it takes is for water temperatures to become one degree Celsius or two to three degrees Fahrenheit higher than the normal range for this kind of stress and bleaching response to be triggered. And in Florida, you know, temperatures were double this. So predictably, scientists were starting to warn that coral bleaching was going to become a problem. And the first report that I could find of coral bleaching in the region came from a PhD student who reported that some of her experimentally outplanted corals had started bleaching on the 11th of July. I then read a report on the 16th of July. And at this time, scientists were still using hesitant language. They were still warning that it could become a big problem. Them. So there were quotes going around like it could mean significant and severe bleaching that will start in the next week and coral could start to die altogether in the next month. It still remains to be seen if this event is going to be more or less severe than the previous events. But then the heat wave persisted and temperatures didn't go down and shit got really real really fast and you skip ahead to 10 days later on the 26th of July and all of a sudden scientists were starting to say things like this is definitely the worst bleaching event that Florida has ever seen. We knew something like this was going to happen at some point we just didn't know when. We still managed to be surprised by the magnitude of this event and how early it came in the season. 
Ocean temperatures are now so elevated that it's likely becoming an existential threat for even the hardiest of corals on Florida's coral reef. It just felt like, oh my God, we're in the apocalypse. What's happening? It's emotionally draining. It was at this stage that a team of researchers who had a coral nursery at an area called Louis Key surveyed this nursery site that they had spent years trying to grow. They found that every single one of their corals were bleached, some 4,500 pieces of elk and staghorn coral. At another restoration site, an acre-wide restoration site at an area called Sombrero Reef, here every single one of the corals had died already or were so severely bleached that death was inevitable. And one of the most chilling quotes I read came from a New York Times article that was covering this. When Bailey Thomason first spotted the coral, she felt a jolt of relief. She was diving for samples off of the Florida Keys and the thicket of Alcorn coral below looked brown, not the stark white that would indicate bleaching from the record-breaking sea temperatures in the area. But as she swam closer, she realized the situation was far worse than she considered possible. The coral did not even have a chance to bleach. It just died. The brown color was not the healthy coral, but dead tissue sloughing off of the skeleton, almost as if it had melted. So understandably, scientists who have been working in this area for a number of years now, trying to restore these corals, setting up these coral nurseries, setting up these restoration efforts, they're devastated. And I mean, I can see, I, like, I was crying reading about the story. It's just... It's a disaster, but you know, these scientists, they're moving past this grief, they're moving past this fear, and they are engaging in this absolute desperate last ditch attempt to try and save these corals by essentially removing them out of these hot tub like ocean temperatures. So labs have set up coral triage units essentially where they're taking cuttings from coral in the ocean, taking them out of the water and putting them in tanks on land where the water is cooler just to try and give these corals a chance to survive, to try and save some of the already limited genetic material in the area. Yeah, and just to have something alive at the end of the day that they can hopefully replant back into the ocean when water temperatures come back down. But you know, one of the biggest concerns is that this is essentially happening in the start or, or the middle of their summer. You know, they haven't even reached August, which is essentially their hottest month. So there's no kind of end in sight. There's no um, signs to show that these temperatures are gonna uh, drop. So yeah, it's just, it's a really scary time. And as we move towards the end of the year where we have summer in the Southern hemisphere, are we going to start seeing record-breaking temperatures here? Are we going to start seeing bleaching on the Great Barrier Reef? These are all kinds of worries that we all have at the moment. Um, this year has not been a great year so far. Uh, we've had these crazy climate events and it's, it's just going to get worse going forward. And there's actually not much, um, not much else to say about it, really. As for, for Florida, this has been their first significant bleaching event in almost 10 years, but they are becoming, you know, more frequent and more severe. And it's just really sad. It's like, if you, if you think of a land example, it's like a, it's like a wildfire raging through an old growth forest, you know, we're losing these corals that have blanketed our ocean floor with their gorgeous colors for thousands of years. And now they just gone they're just white skeletons or brown skeletons with nothing left and it it obviously has huge negative impacts for all of the fish sharks other marine life that rely on these coral reefs for the people in the area coral reefs are extremely important to people so it's just really really sad and it's not only florida's reefs that are in trouble you know essentially all coral reefs around the world are facing the same kinds of threats and the United Nations Climate Change Panel in 2018 noted that the fate of coral reefs hangs in the balance. If our temperatures, uh, in best case scenario, increase by the one and a half degrees Celsius that we're trying to keep it to, essentially we're going to lose 70 to 90% of our corals anyway. If our temperatures rise more than two degrees Celsius, which is likely going to happen given the current trajectory we're on, we're going to lose 99% of our corals. So essentially by the end of the century, there are going to be no more coral reefs, which I don't, I, I don't, I don't really know what, what, what to say about that. 
But I do want to end this video with just a little bit of hope, a little bit of something positive. Um, I don't want to end it on doom and gloom. So there are steps that all of us can take to try and mitigate the effects of climate change. Use renewable energy when possible. Stop buying endless amounts of shit and clothing and gadgets that we don't need because consumption uh, gives off a huge amount of greenhouse gases. Reduce your meat consumption where possible and shop local where possible. You know, let's stop shipping things from all around the world. Um, so yeah, just a couple of tips. And with that, uh, I don't really know how to end this video. Um, but yeah, un until the next time. I'll, I'll see you guys there, hopefully with a bit of a better message.